Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Langenberg Living Room concert. Actually, tonight we are in the music room. The living room is right back there. This is where we teach the lessons when we have music lessons in the house. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the Dubuque Symphony and the Dubuque Symphony staff for making this living room concert happen. It has been very difficult to not be able to share our music with audiences. This pandemic has been really, really hard on performers. So this is such a wonderful blessing and opportunity for us to be able to play for you this evening. So we have a really cute program and we had a little snafu with the microphones right before we went live. So if there is a problem hearing something or something is far too loud, just give us a shout out in the comments and let us know and we'll make some adjustments as we're going. And um, <clears throat> also wanted to let you know that if you have any questions about the music we're performing this evening or uh, questions for us personally or comments or whatever, feel free to leave those in the comment section and we will uh, answer any questions after the performance this evening. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to go do what tuba players do and take a break before I start because, uh, you know, we don't want to work too hard. It's a lot of weight to pick up. So excuse me. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> This is a 
not how we anticipated the microphones working for this evening, but this is how it's going to go. So that was a piece by Ernst Pader. Um, <clears throat> it's just etude number 16. It's uh, out of a book that horn players, like every horn player owns, called 335 Selected Studies, Selected and Progressive Studies for the French Horn. Uh, just a little, we don't really know much about this man, Ernst Pader, other than that he was Austrian and he was born in 1899. He wrote a lot of music, uh, etudes, so that leads me to believe that he was probably a brass instructor or a brass teacher for the trumpet and the French horn. So we're going to play one more piece, and I'm going to turn it over to Jim Langenberg. This is by a beloved horn composer and also a horn player named Henry Kling. Henry Kling was born in 1842, and he died in 1918. And this piece is his characteristic study number 16. It's pretty well known among horn players because it's a great piece for practicing and exploring the low range on the French horn, something that we don't get to do as often as maybe we would like. It's a very beautiful register that just doesn't project very well, so it's not used so much uh, in melodic settings in orchestra music, but it's a great practice and it's a really beautiful piece. So this is Characteristic Study number 16 by Henry Kling.
wow, such great service. And we don't even have a stage manager here, not bad. Uh, I'm not accustomed to uh, this sort of pampering. Um, so hi everybody, I, I'm Jim Langenberg. For, for those of you that may not recognize me, it, it might be the Corona beard. Uh, ha had to do something while we were stuck here. Oh, I'm just kidding, we, we had plenty to do around here. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I was looking at some of the comments just to monitor and make sure that we weren't having an issue with the sound. And uh, there was a comment about imperfections. And I, I wanna share with everyone that to be honest, this is a very scary experience for me. And I'm not talking about the, uh, the virus, but of, of course there's that. Um, but performing uh, live and not being able to see an audience is, is really a, a very different experience for me and I'm sure for all musicians. And it really gives you an opportunity to think about the scariest things in your dreams of the awfulest things happening and the invisible person that's coming to get you. And well, now all we have are invisible people listening. I'm sure it'll be fine. So uh, this next piece that I'm going to play is a piece called Beelzebub, and it's just an Aaron variation. It's a fun piece that was written for the tuba actually very early on, 1886, and it was entered into a competition, and it actually won a prize. Um, and it was written by a tuba player named Andrea Cotosi, and uh, he was a uh, what, what was called a tuba soloist in a couple of bands on the East Coast. Um, tuba soloist does not necessarily refer to what we think of as someone who plays a solo out in front of an orchestra or a band or something like that, but generally would be referred to as the first chair player. So while I'm the principal tuba of the Dubuque Symphony in another era or perhaps location, like uh, in Europe, this, it's often referred to this, that I am the solo tubist of the Dubuque Symphony. And so today I'm going to play my solo. Now this is, is a fun piece. It's not exactly very serious. I mean, come on, a tuba piece called Beelzebub, how serious can it be? Um, it's a, a lot of tongue in cheek. It starts off with, a vari with the air or just the theme. And then we move into a triplet section, a 16th note section. And of course we have to have some long tones because it is a tuba piece. So don't worry, there'll be a couple of those. Not too many, don't wanna be too bored. I don't want to be too bored. Uh, qu quite frankly, this is a piece that I, I like to play for fun. And, and sometimes I even have my advanced students work on as well. So it does have some, some technical stuff to it and uh, hopefully not too many imperfections. We shall see. Thank you. 
I think the most impressive aspect of this concert so far is the fact that our children haven't come into this room and interrupted us. So that's great. We um, totally told them they could have popcorn and popsicles and whatever kind of candy they wanted if they stayed upstairs for 30 minutes. So I've got my fingers crossed. They've got about 15 to go. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. Um, okay, so the next piece that we're gonna perform for you is a duet. Luckily, in quarantine, we've still uh, been able to do a few things together, make music together here and there. So this is an arrangement of the Mozart Horn Concerto Number no. 3, the second movement or the inner movement, which is the slow, more lyrical movement uh, of the piece. Mozart had a one of his best friends was a horn player, like so many people in this world. Uh, Josef Leutgeb was his name. And Josef frequently asked Mozart to write music for him. So as a result of that, horn players have four complete concertos written by Mozart and then a fragment of a fifth concerto as well that was never finished. And they're all really, really beautiful music and very popular. And so this is, once again, the Romanza 
from Mozart's third horn concerto. It is arranged in a duet by a colleague of mine who lives in the south side of Chicago named Peter Jurasic. So we hope you like it.
Okay, I'm sure had had Mozart the option to write tuba into the horn, well, not even to write it into the horn concerto, I'm sure if he had known that the tuba was going to be an instrument, he would have written solos for the tuba, I'm sure, sure like as well. Anyway. Yeah, so anyway, I have um, one more solo piece for you, and then Jim's going to come back, and we're going to do a little jazz. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to play one more piece by the French horn, the French, French horn player and uh, composer Jacques-Francois Gallet. He uh, is, is well known and beloved as a horn pedagogue and many students and lovers of the horn uh, study his music, his preludes, his uh, pedagogical etudes. This piece is one of his etudes. It is subtitled Firmente, which means fiery. And I think you'll be pretty easy to hear why he titled it that. It's a fairly aggressive piece for <laughs> uh, the mid 1800s and um, features the, the more the mid range of the French horn, but um, you'll hear some low stuff and some high stuff as well. So this is Firmente, it's Gallet's etude number 44. Well, before we perform our last piece, I just want to take this opportunity to again thank the Dubuque Symphony and the Dubuque Symphony staff. And if you haven't, um, if you have enjoyed this evening's performance, please, please consider giving a donation to the Dubuque Symphony. It would really help all of us, all of the arts organizations in Dubuque and all of the musicians and those persons affiliated with the Dubuque Symphony and the arts community in Dubuque. 
Our final piece for you this evening is uh, titled Just Desserts by Lowell E. Shaw. And uh, this particular piece was written as an exercise to help us sad French horn players try to learn how to do a little bit of jazz, a little bit of swinging, and a little bit of jazz articulation. And it was first presented at a horn conference, and it was so well received that um, <laughs> actually Lowell Shaw went on to make practically an entire career off of writing this style of music. So you can find these styles in solo music, duet literature, trios, and quartets, most commonly known as horn fripperies. But these were originally written for solo horn, and then he later added a walking bass line. So lucky for Jim, he gets to do exactly what the tuba was meant to do. My sousaphone's downstairs. Play bass lines. <laughs> so we hope you enjoy this one. Just Desserts, number one by Lowell E. Shaw. Thanks Thank for you, tuning in. Thank you.